I'd like to welcome Dean Dubois, writer and director of How to Train Your Dragon, who is actually from Ottawa originally. Yes, well, from just outside of Ottawa. I'm from Elmer, Quebec. So can you tell us in the short version, or maybe the, the uh, pitch version, how you made it from Ottawa all the way to Hollywood to producing one of the most successful animated films of all time? All right. Well, I could always draw. I wanted to be a comic book artist, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. So I found Sheridan College's classical animation program, and I took that for three summers. And immediately, I was hired out of college. I went to go work in Ireland for Don Bluth Studios for, for four years. And that gave me the, the work experience and uh, the portfolio, really, to get hired at Disney. So I, I spent uh, quite a few years at Disney working on Mulan and then Lilo and Stitch. That was my first opportunity to actually write and direct and then left to set up some live action films uh, to write and direct and eventually came back to work on Dragon for DreamWorks, also collaborating with uh, Chris Sanders, who I'd done both Mulan and Lilo and Stitch with. That was a really good summary. <laughs> now, uh, your, your seminar was really interesting and very informative on the writing process. One of the biggest misconceptions you say about com uh, writing for animation is that uh, you're now writing for kids, so you have to include a lot of Pratt Falls and Daffy Duck style writing. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think I, I've, I've always been of the opinion that you should take the projects that you work on quite seriously. And so the, the worlds, the characters within the worlds, Always, uh, they, they, have, they have quirks that we can find in ourselves. They're, they're, um, we try to create characters that have a real um, three-dimensional quality with moments of heroism, with moments of, of you know, fallacies, and, and they, they just are real, as, as real as they can be, and they take their, their worlds as reality. And so even if you have aliens crash landing to Earth like in Lilo and Stitch, their situation, you know, and the pressure that they're under, you know, as, as two siblings trying to hold on to what family they have left under the scrutiny of, of child welfare, and, you know, all of that is sort of creating a, a gravitas to the world that you can bring whimsy into by means of, you know, alien bounty hunters and an escaped alien convict. Um, with, with, with How to Train Your Dragon, uh, that was, we just tried to make sure that everything, even though it was a world kind of larger than life, the peril felt real and the stakes felt real. If you got in the way of a dragon blowing fire, you were going to get scorched and you might die. Um, and, uh, and so it makes it that much more believable, like these characters, these creatures could have existed at one point and we're telling kind of a forgotten piece of history. Uh, but within that, there is caricature. The world is larger than life. The, the, the characters have uh, personalities that are sort of broad and humorous and yet, it, it allows for a moment where we could take a character's leg off because he didn't come out unscathed and, and you don't feel like that came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I, it, for me, it's just, you know, all the, all the sort of um, Looney Tunes kind of uh, goofy, like get shot in the face and your beak just turns around the other side of your head is, is not a sensibility I've ever really latched myself onto. Mm -hmm. And so I always approach animation with a bit of a live action sense of reality. It's really great to see Canadian people making it big in LA. So congratulations. Thank you. How to Train Your Dragon Part Two comes out in summer of 2014. In summer of 2014, and then it'll be followed by uh, the third part of the, th of the trilogy in uh, 2016. Great. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thanks Thank so much, you. Dean. Thanks very much.